Okay. So, uh, my name is uh, Marianne Marinov. Uh, I'm uh, Director of uh, Engineering at uh, Web Hosting Canada. And uh, I will not be showing you any code. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm talking about message queuing, uh, a way that uh, you would be able to scale your applications, or actually many ways uh, that you can scale your applications. So we would be covering uh, German, uh, Mosquito, Kafka, and RabbitMQ here. We cannot uh, explain all of these things in uh, 20 minutes, but I'll try to give you a comparison of what you have there, and at the end, a few libraries that you can use with uh, Java directly. I'm not uh, writing in Java. The last Java code I wrote was 15 years ago, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, the first thing that you have to understand about message queuing is uh, uh, there is an architecture that uh, you have to follow, and uh, the different servers here, brokers, are implementing uh, the architecture in different ways. Uh, in German, the same thing is called Quant and Worker. In Mosquito, we have uh, Publish Subscribe, and Kafka Publish Subscribe, and in RabbitMQ, we have Producer and Consumer. These are exactly the same things, just called in a different way uh, in different software, but they're the same thing. There are multiple uh, other options uh, out there, uh, especially for uh, this, uh, this talk. I'm not covering all of them. Uh, all of these have in the middle between the client and the worker, the uh, producer and the uh, consumer, all of them have a broker, broker server. And I intentionally skipped 0MQ and uh, postfix queues to make this easier. Also skipped ActiveMQ and JBossMQ. <laughs> now, what is this thing? Uh, think of it as a, a very small, yeah, I have three lines of code, sorry. <laughs> so uh, think of uh, your application as uh, a monolith uh, application that you want to scale out to different servers because it's already taking a lot of resources on your current machine. Uh, what you can do is essentially move only function of your application somewhere else, on some, or some other machine. The only thing that you need in, on that machine is the code of your application and connection to whatever databases or files you need. But your code can run there. And essentially, if you have main with uh, an application that is calling get user data with some user ID, this is your monolith application. In uh, uh, message queuing architecture, you would have this uh, get user data on another machine, and uh, your app to here would be essentially implementing your get user data on another machine. That is the important part. People start usually by uh, creating this message queuing on the same server, so on the same machine, and as soon as the resources are not enough, they just move the code that was uh, receiving this, uh, uh, these messages on another machine. Very easy. And uh, it doesn't require you building any APIs. You don't need to retest your code because it's the same code. Now, uh, what is the interesting thing? Here we have two applications that may be the same code. Application one and application two may be the same code. The same code base, same language. What is different, what message queuing allows you to do is you can write your application one in any language you want. And uh, in uh, German, German uh, this would be called Quant. In, uh, in uh, Kafka and Mosquito, that would be called Publisher. And in RabbitMQ, that would be called Producer. But it can be written in any language that can connect to those servers. That's it. Application two is the same thing. It can be written in a different language. The main advantage of this having different languages is that not every language is suited for every uh, application. So some things require better uh, suited languages for them. So if you want to include AI in your application and you want to have that AI use Python libraries, you write it in Python and you use that function in your code directly as uh, 
uh, a function that you would call in your code. That is the nice thing. And this uh, uh, application that would be on the other side of the broker, we call in German worker, in Kafka and Mosquito subscriber, and in RabbitMQ we call it consumer. This application is receiving the information from the first application. So we have brokers. The brokers is uh, a server that stands in the middle between what is sending the information to the function and what is actually pooling data for uh, this function. These brokers may implement sending messages in different ways. Generally, uh, most people prefer uh, round robin, which means that in synchronous way, uh, we are sending from the client to the worker or from the publisher to the subscriber uh, data, and we are expecting only one of the subscribers or only one of the workers to actually execute what we are sending. Uh, I'll go back to this slide here. We have up to multiple times here because we can run multiple instances of this application, either on the same machine or multiple machines without any problem. This means that you now can send a message to all of these applications and you want to be able to control how you're sending these messages. Either one message to all applications or one message to the queue and then the broker decides on which application from these uh, four up two instances it would send the message. So uh, the round robin is uh, essentially the, uh, this uh, normal, direct way of sending uh, uh, data. But you can also do uh, asynchronous uh, uh, round robin, where you would send data and close the connection to the broker. You send the data and no longer uh, think about it. I'll tell you why this is helpful in a bit. Uh, so the brokers can implement also weighted, uh, weighted system, where you decide which, if you have, let's say, five servers, and on these five servers you have five instances of your application, but they are not equal hardware. Let's say one of them is uh, very new hardware, but four of them are not so new, so do not have enough RAM, do not have enough CPU. You can uh, configure the weights uh, on each server, so each of these uh, uh, subscribers, consumers, workers, they can uh, receive certain number of uh, percentage of these re requests, which is very nice because you can essentially control the world there. Then the next thing is fan out, sent to all of them at the same time. Uh, this usually is used in uh, uh, massively multiplayer games or uh, when you have to uh, send the same message to multiple instances at the same time. And uh, the other is topics. We will see topics in a bit, but uh, think of it as a path to something. And uh, you can use either a single topic or just a certain part of the path that would cover multiple topics at the same time. So why would you choose to implement messaging in your uh, applications? Because it's uh, significantly wider than calling a full API, you do, not, uh, you do not need to handle all the uh, things around APIs. You can use different languages uh, very easily uh, by leveraging the most of uh, each language. The only caveat here, the only important thing is that when you are sending this data between your main application and your function, you have to agree on data format. And we'll speak about that in a bit. Uh, you would uh, use one important thing, and in your applications, many people are uh, used to write, uh, uh, send parameters to functions, methods, uh, by reference, not by value. And unfortunately, because you're sending data across the network, uh, you use this functionality. But uh, you have self-confined interface that uh, is... Uh, running on the machine, so you do not run every time this application, like an API. You have it started, it's loaded, preheated with all the information. Uh, you get extreme parallelism. And by extreme, I mean sky is the limit depending on what you choose in terms of broker. You can start with a smaller broker, or you can just start with RabbitMQ and you would grow with it 
as long, uh, as, long as you have machines. <laughs> then uh, control over resource usage. When you're sending messages in uh, direct mode, uh, where uh, one uh, client is sending to one worker, uh, and the worker produces something and returns the data, usually when you are running your application, your application uh, would stack on your function that is very slow, and you would wait for the server to return this. Then, if you need parallelism, usually you start your multiple instances of your application on that server to just handle the slow function. With uh, message queuing, you can essentially send messages in queues. The broker can decide if you have available instance of the slow function. So usually people are doing uh, are profiling their application, seeing which functions are the slowest, and moving those away using uh, message queues. Where you can control the number of resources used by just the number of instances of your applications that, uh, that you're starting. Anything above that number would end up on the queue, waiting for any of the instances to get free, and you would be able to uh, send data to that. Uh, the one strange thing that you get from this is access separation. So your application is running on one server under one user, and uh, essentially uh, everything that this application touches in terms of files, uh, connections, is under this user. When you move your code, either on the same machine with different user or on a different machine using uh, message queues, you're separating accesses. You can run on a different, you're running on a different machine or uh, in different user, and you can control uh, this, uh, these resources easily. Now, uh, what's the architecture of the brokers? Uh, this is comparison between the different brokers. This is not to tell you how message queue works altogether, but uh, you have to understand that there are different types of brokers. You can have uh, a Gearman uh, broker, which is the simplest of them all. Uh, it's very fast, very efficient, but it runs on one machine. If that machine dies, you're losing the queuing. Gearman has persistent queues in a database or files, so it's, you'd not lose what you have there, but because the machine is down, you lose the capability to sending messages and to receiving messages. So it's not highly available. It can be done, but it's not highly available. The same goes for Mosquito. Mosquito, however, has a pro version where you can pay, and they would do the high availability for you. you there are guides how to do high available uh, Gearman 2. I even wrote one a few years ago. So it's not that hard, but it's not out of the box. On the other hand, we have, for example, Kafka and RabbitMQ. And uh, Kafka can be run on a single server, but when you're reading the guides there, you would see that it says, uh, we generally require free servers to start with. <laughs> so uh, this is where uh, Kafka and RabbitMQ become a little bit harder for uh, people to embrace initially, because who is running free instances of the same server just uh, to send a few messages? <laughs> so when you're starting, uh, this is uh, a bit of a stretch to start with this. So uh, Kafka and RabbitMQ however, have uh, distributed uh, queues out of the box. They are built in, in their protocol, in their architecture. So when you need to scale, scale infinitely, that would be Kafka and uh, RabbitMQ. And large scale, definitely RabbitMQ. So uh, messages and topics. Uh, Gearman is, as I said, the simplest of them all. It implements just sending messages. It gets a string on uh, the client side and just puts it on the queue and waits for a worker to get the work, the job from the queue and execute it. So that string data is sent to the worker and then the worker has to decide how to interpret that string. Uh, Gearman has its own protocol, very easy to install, very easy to start working with, and the fastest protocol of uh, all of these. Then we have uh, Mosquito. Mosquito was built around Internet of Things, 
So it is, again, very lightweight because it has to run on uh, very harder and constrained devices. We're talking about uh, devices that have uh, 256 kilobytes of RAM. <laughs> and this has to run there, right? So uh, this protocol is uh, uh, very well defined for this specific need. Uh, it's, uh, it has its own protocol called uh, MQTT. Uh, and uh, compared to Gearman, it's... Uh, gives you more by uh, creating a topic hierarchy uh, for your uh, messages. And uh, what I mean by this is, uh, look at this uh, sensor's uh, temperature uh, path there. The plus there uh, would mean that uh, you don't, you know, it is uh, essentially an asterisk where you say, uh, I want every path that is in there uh, to be covered and I'm sending this message to all of these. Or I'm querying for messages sent to all of these queues. This allows one worker to implement multiple, uh, uh, to listen on multiple topics at the same time. So whatever is there on any of the topics, the broker would give it to the worker. Now, uh, one uh, interesting thing is that Gearman when uh, you send a message to the queue, it remains in the queue un until you either manually delete it or a worker consumes uh, the job. In Mosquito, uh, we are uh, retaining this data on the uh, topic and you have to uh, con consume it or auto-expire it. The auto-expire is a configuration uh, in Mosquito. So it does not stay there permanently. There is a, a default expression that I forgot to uh, put here. Then on Kafka, any messages, uh, yes, Kafka has its own protocol. It also implements a uh, uh, hierarchy structure. But messages there are not deleted at all. So you ha your worker, your uh, subscriber in this case, has to make sure that once the message is consumed, you have to delete it from, uh, from the queue. This is a little bit of annoyance and uh, a thing that uh, normally when you are moving from a normal function that you execute and forget is uh, more work to do. Uh, they decided to do it like this, so that's it. RabbitMQ, on the other hand, is, uh, I think, the oldest of uh, uh, the message uh, brokers and it implements uh, a lot of protocols. Uh, STOMP, uh, MQTT, uh, AMQP, it also supports HTTP and WebSockets. Uh, RabbitMQ is essentially used in uh, uh, very, mm, let's say, uh, environments where you have frequent changes, like uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange or uh, anything that uh, has uh, a lot of uh, transactions per second that has to scale a lot. So it's the hardest of uh, all of these uh, uh, servers to configure initially to start with, but it gives you the most of the message queuing. So if you need a lot of functionalities, this is the way to go. If you just need to send your messages somewhere and scale your application, I would generally go with Gearman. Now, uh, Gearman specifically implements only one type of delivery of message. Okay, two. Uh, it's a round robin, but uh, uh, you have sync or async uh, messages. What sync means is that your client, let's say web application, would send a job to the server. Uh, to the broker. The broker would see if you have any available workers for this job, and if you have, it would essentially send your job message to the worker. At this point, it would not close the connection to the client. The worker would receive the message and uh, would do the work that you have required of it and return the message. This is the only uh, interface that immediately returns data back to the client and then you have asynchronous. Asynchronous, the client connects to the broker, sends, okay, I want to uh, execute this, this job, and that's it. Forget about, close the connection, that's it. 
Then uh, the broker gearman would get this message uh, to the first worker available. Even if there are no workers, it would still keep the job. And as soon as you connect a worker, it would execute the code and do, do the work. In a similar way, Mosquito implements uh, asynchronous uh, delivery where you have your publisher uh, that would send message to certain topics and then uh, when there are subscribers for these topics, they would get the message and uh, act upon it. These asynchronous methods are significantly uh, are tailored specifically for uh, asynchronous work, meaning something that you can execute without receiving any return values. Because when you need to return values, essentially this uh, uh, message queuing mechanism is not the best way to deliver data. If you need uh, an API, or write an API, or use gRPC, okay, there is no problem to do that. But uh, these are synchronous ways where you expect to get a return from your code. If you are, for example, logging, uh, you don't need to return anything. You just need to make sure that the log message is logged. Or if you are, for example, converting, mes uh, converting images or uh, analyzing PDFs or uh, just doing data processing, Making this asynchronous allows your application to continue working without uh, any weight on anything that you have sent to the workers, to your subscribers. So Kafka, uh, as we said, messages are not deleted uh, on consumption. You have to take care of that. This is a bit of annoyance, but you have to live with that. RabbitMQ, on the other side, uh, supports everything. So direct is uh, similar to what Gearman implements with uh, sync method, but the pro depends specifically on the protocol because HTTP significantly differs from uh, AMQP and so on. So that is the uh, direct method. Then you have fanout. Uh, fanout is broadcasting to all of your workers uh, in, in RabbitMQ consumers. Uh, so a message sent to any topic would be broadcasted to anyone that is subscribed to that topic. So if you have five servers subscribed to this topic, at the same time, almost immediately, you would get the message on all five servers and they would start working on, you, on what you have sent to that uh, uh, topic. Then uh, you have topic specifics where the subscribers can, uh, the consumers of RabbitMQ can uh, subscribe to specific topics or lists of topics by matching uh, by uh, using certain uh, uh, certain characters to create a, a match of a topic. This way, a, work, uh, a consumer in uh, RabbitMQ can uh, consume data from multiple topics at the same time. Again, without sync, everything else requires something to remove the job from the queue. <laughs> this is the important thing here. Now, uh, the actual communication. So your application is sending uh, data from uh, uh, your application to uh, the broker. These may live on the same server, but they can be on different servers too. And then your broker makes sure to uh, send the jobs from a list of jobs that it has to other uh, instances. Now, what's important here is that where I have these purple lines, you have to essentially negotiate what would be the uh, format uh, for this uh, data. JSON, uh, binary JSON, uh, protobuf, whatever you want. Uh, so essentially your function there would be sending, for example, JSON to your broker. Uh, so, uh, the go-to solution for Java usually is Kafka. This is uh, from uh, all of my uh, friends that have implemented any message queuing. Generally, they go for Kafka. I don't know why, but this is what I have seen uh, in the past. 
So Kafka Streams is the library to use when you are using Kafka. Uh, when you are using Gearman, uh, it has two libraries, uh, Java Gearman Service and Gearman Java, both on GitHub. These are links that you would have in the presentation. And uh, Mosquito, uh, OK, I pasted the wrong slide here. So you would see the links to Mosquito. There is the PEEP uh, uh, library that uh, is uh, offered for Java. And RabbitMQ, unsurprisingly, has multiple libraries that uh, you can use for uh, interfacing with it. Uh, why link to all of them? Because uh, for much of you, uh, if you have already uh, these libraries in your builds, that would be very easy instead of uh, including one more library that you have to test with your code base. So, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, um, I guess you excluded the managed service uh, on purpose, so I, yeah. I, I would be curious to 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 uh, to, to ask you take about uh, like managed services such as uh, Amazon SQS or uh, SNS. Uh. I haven't used those okay. because I'm working in hosting. Okay. <laughs> I'm providing those for ah, you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I missed that part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions? All right. Thank you, guys.